Uh, hi guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, so basically today we're going to be covering econo economics. Yes, economics. Okay, so we're going to be looking at a very classic A-level question. Okay, and how are we going to actually answer this? Okay, so basically for today's question, okay, we're going to be looking at a microeconomics question. Okay, this one actually falls under market structure. Okay, which I realize a lot of students tend to um, actually make mistakes in Okay, because yes, it is not an easy topic, but once you have actually mastered it and understand how it actually works, okay, and what are the different kind of like tips and shortcuts that you can go about answering these questions, trust me, it should not be a problem anymore. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. Okay, so today's question actually comes from a 2005 paper. Okay, and this question, uh, question three is actually explain the type of market structure in which each of the following is likely to operate in Singapore. Okay, so firstly, you have got hawker food stalls, and then secondly, you have got five-star luxury hotels. Okay, first thing that we need to understand, okay, is let's firstly identify what kind of a market structure these actually fall under, okay? So just to recap, okay, just to recap, the type of market structures you have, oops, okay, that you have is actually your perfect competition, Okay, you have got your monopolistic competition. You have got your oligopolies. And then finally, your monopoly. Monopoly, okay? So, firstly, we have to identify, okay, what does a hawker food store actually fall under? So, firstly, you know that perfect competition, in reality, doesn't really happen. Okay, oligopolies and monopoly and MC firms are more, more likely to happen, okay? So, for an hawker food stores, Okay, they are actually likely to be a monopolistic competition firm. Okay, and the reason for this, okay, is where we have to start breaking it down in this answer. Okay, because you see, uh, the answer is asking you to explain the type of market structure in which each of the following is laid up in. So basically, this whole question is basically asking you to explain what a monopolistic competition firm actually is and why a hawker food store is actually related to it. Okay. So one of the first characteristics that we can first point out is that basically a MC market is characterized by what? A large number of small firms. Correct? Okay. So this is something that you have to know, okay, based on content. Okay, MC market is usually characterized by small firms. Okay, and not just this, okay, what other characteristics can you have? So usually when you answer these kind of questions, we're basically trying to throughout and describe all our characteristics and then explain it after that okay so as well as have low barriers to entry so low barriers to entry is what actually allows many firms to enter as well as to leave the market okay for instance all your chicken rice stores okay you notice that in one hawker center alone let's say um balestier food market okay you notice that there are tons and tons of chicken rice stores okay the reason for this is because it's actually very easy to assess the market you just need to be able to buy your raw ingredients and you can sell anything you want. Yet, in an MC firm, in an MC market, you actually notice that every chicken rice store has different products. Some of them may have bean sprouts, some of them may have chicken rice balls. Okay, all these kind of different things which is actually what makes them slightly more unique. Hence, MC firms can actually what control their own price to a certain extent. Okay, so you need to understand this concept very clearly. Okay, next, what else? Okay, so now we have to go on and explain basically our characteristics. Firstly, low barriers to entry. What does this actually mean? Okay, so in this case, low barriers to entry for an MC firm usually refers to costs. So in this case, hawker centers, um, all these stores actually have very low costs, correct? It's very easy to set up. You just need to pay low rent, okay, as well as to just get raw ingredients. And notice that you can actually set up the store no problem at all okay what else you also notice that the number of stores number of small firms in singapore there are thousands and thousands of hawker food stores in singapore okay so this makes it very very clear that it's an mc firm because why oligopolies is only how many firms three to four maybe four to six um, firms in one market whereas a monopoly is only one dominating firm so that's one way to easily tell that it's an MC firm. Okay, and then what else can you give? Uh, you can also give the fact that MC firms are slightly differentiated. 
So this way you give an example. For example, chicken rice stores or let's say your chakwe tiao. Okay, so they differ in terms of innovation. So in the in this case, some firms actually let's say produce chicken rice balls or let's say produce um different different uses of rice for example maybe some some stores actually offer you brown rice or some offer you white rice or some i don't know some other rice like plasmati rice or something okay so as a result this is actually how you can tell that um an mc firm oh sorry a hawker store firm is actually an mc firm okay the last thing you need to touch on okay is always to bring in your analysis so how can we bring in our analysis over here Okay, analysis usually refers to economic analysis, which basically would be can things be like your demand, PED, PS, okay, anything that shows analysis in an e economics lens. So in this case for MC firm, one form of analysis can be that they still face a downward sloping curve. This is because they have the ability to control their own price to a certain extent. Okay, and not just that, they also have a slightly elastic demand. Okay, which means that they can actually raise their own prices if they run, yeah, if they want to. Okay, but usually this is usually by a very small extent. Because why? If they raise it too high, this would cause them to actually lose out. Because let's say if you're the consumer, you'd think, eh, I can actually just go to another store to get the same chicken rice. Okay, so that is really all you need to do for this first part. Okay, and so second part, we're going to look at your five-star luxury hotel. Okay, so just like this, you get your five marks here. Yeah? Okay, part two, your five-star luxury hotel, very, very obvious. It is actually a oligopoly firm. Okay, so what are the characteristics of, of an oligopoly? Firstly, there are very few large firms which dominate the market so each of them usually tend to have maybe say a 20 percent share okay and then what else what else can you talk about when you look at a five-star hotel okay so they have somewhat unique goods okay it is not extremely unique okay because they still have the differences which is why they're an oligopoly market okay but you notice that they have slightly different goods and services uh, in this case, five star hotels usually is services. Okay, we are not looking at goods in this case. Okay, so what else can you point out? Barriers to entry. So in the case of oligopoly firms, so oligopoly markets tend to have very high barriers to entry. Which I only notice that there are certain hotel groups in Singapore. For example, your Pan Pacific Group, your Shangri La Group. Okay, notice that these are the main hotel brands which tend to dominate the market instead. Okay, and what else can we point out? Okay, we can also point out that in the case of your barriers to entry, okay, as in now we are describing your characteristics. The high barriers to entry is basically what? High startup costs. Why? Because of the need to purchase land. Okay, hire um, different crew for different jobs in the hotel sector okay so notice that all this actually adds up to the barriers to entry as a person like you at home right now would you do you think you you have a greater ability to go out there and create a hawker store or to actually create a five star hotel so notice that a five star hotel will actually be very very hard to create okay so now the next thing that we need to to actually also add in okay is that it's a very very specific characteristic to oligopoly firms which is that they are mutually interdependent okay what does mutually interdependent mean okay it means that when one firm takes action or does something other firms will tend to copy or follow suit okay for example if a firm lowers their price okay you actually notice that rival firms will also tend to lower their price as well Okay, and this is, is something that oligopoly firms actually share because why? They actually produce very similar products. Okay, for example, in the case of hotels, they are all basically offering you a service. A service for tourists, 
for you to actually relax and stay in a hotel. And in that case, a lot of different hotels, you know, if you raise price or you lower price, of course you want a lower price so that you can attract more customers um, instead of losing them to other hotels instead. Okay, so you have to point out that mutual interdependence is actually a very, very key feature of the oligop- uh, oligopoly market um, in the case of your five-star hotels. Okay, so you'll notice that all these lowering of prices and all in the in the in the future you realize that they actually result in things like price wars, which are actually not favorable to the market. Okay, so these are just certain things that you can actually um point out as well. Okay, so basically that is all you need to actually um, write out. Lastly, you can also include your analysis. So in this case, your analysis, right? If you want, you can actually draw out the diagram. Okay, your oligopoly diagram. If you don't draw it out, it's also fine. So you don't need to explain about how um, oligopoly firms such as five star luxury hotels face okay a kinked demand curve and a downward sloping demand. I'll go through what a kinked demand curve in, in another video. Very simply, it basically means that there's a certain zone um, of the demand curve in which firms, no matter how much they lower their price, it won't affect anything so it won't affect their quantity it won't affect um, um, any any of their business as well as other firms okay so they also face a downward sloping uh, curve because of their slightly differentiated products or uh, services okay for example Shangri-La may offer you a, a free spa whereas uh, Pan Pacific Hotel may not okay so these are basically the slight differences in which um, these five-star hotels have Okay, so lastly, to end off this 10 mark essay, you just need to do a quick conclusion. Basically, uh, just something like um, um, looking at the different characteristics of both markets, MC and oligopoly markets. Okay, um, it is clear. Okay, it is clear that um, hawker stores fall in the MC category and 5 star hotels actually fall into the uh, oligopoly markets or oligopoly yeah oligopoly markets okay and if not that should actually be it so you notice is actually this question is actually very very simple as soon as the type of market structure in which each of the following um, is likely to operate in Singapore okay your 10 marks is very simple you just need to first Give me all the different characteristics of what the firms are. Okay, of course, firstly, you must say what it, what it falls in. La. So give me the characteristics. After you've done the characteristics, go on to do your analysis. This will actually be 5 marks. Oligopoly firm, this is really 1 mark. And then after that, go on, give your characteristics as well as your um, explanation, your analysis. And then finally, draw me a conclusion. Okay, so your summary over here, which I'll put down here as well, Okay, so that you, you know what to include. First, Okay, give me, oops, so just basically the type of market each operates in, give me an X, uh, sorry, your characteristics, can't spell today, wow, okay, so the characteristics of each market, and then explanation of the characteristics, is it wrong, is it wrong, it's correct, okay, explanation of the characteristics, and then lastly, your economic analysis okay so this one can be in the form of causal links or diagrams okay if not that should be it okay this question actually very very straightforward this is all you need to have to get your 10 marks all right so if not i'll see you in the next video okay stay tuned for for more parts okay on economics especially on micro okay because i know micro can be a bit tricky at times okay bye